Hi everyone. This is Eileen Minogue. I'm with the uh, I'm the executive director with the Book Fairies. Welcome today. Uh, today we have Coach Dana Cavalia. We're excited to have him, and uh, he'll be reading from one of his books. As as we work to promote the readathon, we're grateful to all of the talented authors and celebrities that have come here to read and do donate and dedicate their time and talent to us to help us raise money and awareness for our mission. We wouldn't exist without our donors and our sponsors. Um, if you're liking what you're seeing here or you're just passionate about our mission, we would ask that you would consider a donation to us today. Um, without funding, we're unable to move books. Um, also, as a reminder, I wanted to let you know if you haven't signed up for the Disney Trivia Night, which is tomorrow night, you can still do so. Um, check out, we're going to put a link to that on our Facebook, and it should be a fun family night, so please join in. Uh, now let's get to Dana. Dana is the former director of strength and conditioning uh, and performance for the New York Yankees. Go Yankees. Um, he led the team to a world championship in 2019. That same year, he was awarded the Nolan Ryan Award given to the top strength and performance coach in, the, in Major League Baseball as voted by his peers, which I always say being voted by your peers is a home run if you will. Uh, Coach is the author of his best-selling uh, book, Habits of a Champion, Nobody Becomes a Champion by Accident. Um, the Champion Kids book series introduces kids to positive leadership and life lessons through stories about life, obstacles, and optimism. Uh, Coach Dana will be reading the first book of the Champion Kids book series, Johnny the Jet Saves the Day. And um, that's a story about uh, being a leader standing up against bullies and doing what is right. Such a hot topic today, and this is really much needed, so we're excited to have you. Coach knows bullying is a very hot, tough topic for kids, and um, this book helps kids uh, know about how to handle these situations, and I think it's a, pretty, it's a pretty cool thing, and I can't wait to hear you read. So I'm gonna leave it to you and let you do what you do best. Cool, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Cool, well, thank you all for coming out, and. And thanks for having me. And yeah, I, I happened to train some really great baseball players and Derek Jeter and Alex Rodriguez and Mariano Rivera, all these great players that, that we here in New York know and we've come to love through the years. And, you know, when I was coaching these players, I, I realized that I can really help them through my writing. So I started writing books. I wrote my first book, which was called Habits of a Champion for Adults. And then I, I started a series of books for kids called Champion Kids because I wanna inspire and motivate kids to be able to handle every situation that they face. So this is the first book that I wrote and it's called you know, Champion Kids, Johnny the Jet Saves the Day, a story about being a leader, standing up to bullies and doing what's right. Because sometimes you know, people put pressure on us as kids and even as adults and we sometimes do what they want us to do but in life, it's really important to do what's right. And you have to know what's right. You have to know right from wrong. But when you follow your gut and you follow your instincts, you'll oftentimes do what's right. So that's, that's what this book is about. And I spoke to um, a middle school one day, a couple, maybe two years ago, and I had such a great experience with the kids. I, I was so inspired by how enthusiastic that they were to stand up in front of the class and, and present themselves and talk about themselves and their life and the things that they deal with, that I said, you know what, I need to go home and, and write a book. And I literally wrote a book in about you know, four hours and, and here's the book that I wrote. Now it took longer than four hours to illustrate it and everything else, but I wanted to read this book uh, to you today. So Champion Kids, Johnny the Jet Saves the Day, a story about being a leader, standing up to bullies and doing what's right. So let me open this here and we'll begin. And I wrote, this book goes out to all the future champions that have the dreams, the ability, the strength, and the magic inside of them to become champions in all that they do. See, for me, I believe that everybody has a champion inside of them and it's their job to bring that to life. And every day you have to remind yourself that you are a champion. And that's what I remind myself of. That's what I remind those around me of. Listen, you're a champion and whatever you want, you gotta go after it and you gotta go get it. So this is the main character right here, Johnny the Jet. 
So it starts off by saying, Johnny finished his homework that took most of the day. Once he was done, he was ready to play. His glove in his hand, his bat under his arm, he ran through the neighborhoods smiling with charm. So he's a baseball player. I love baseball, and that's how we got to this. All right. His friends were waiting for him to start the game, but Johnny the Jet just never came. His friends wondered what could be wrong, so they turned on the stadium speakers and blasted his song. Johnny was missing, and his friends were scared, so they took to their bikes to show him they cared. They rode through the neighborhood, screaming his name. Johnny the Jet, we are starting the game. As they rode through the streets, they saw Johnny in pain. He was taking some punches from the school bully, Tony Dufresne. One punch, two punch, three punch, four. Johnny's glove and his bat were scattered all over the floor. Johnny was scared, but he never punched back. He instead looked at Tony with the tip of the cap. He knew Tony was a bully because he grew up alone, no parents, no siblings. He did not even have a home. Understanding how angry Tony felt within, Johnny took each punch with a positive spin. After 15 minutes, out of nowhere, Tony broke down and cried. It was as if his energy had gone, leaving him aching and feeling empty inside. Johnny gave Tony a hug and said, it's not fair, this situation you are in, but realize this, you are still just a kid. Sometimes in life, things don't go our way, but being angry and mean is not a good way. Often in life, you will get more with sugar than limes. I want you to meet my friends, so let's go and have a good time. As Johnny's friends saw him hugging Dufresne, they asked him, Johnny, are you okay to play in today's game? Johnny said, my stomach is sore and black is my eye, but we have a new teammate named Tony. Let's give him a try. He needs us to show him some love and some care. He has had some hard times. Does anybody have a glove they can share? One of the boys had an extra glove and a bat, and boom, Tony was on the team. Just as simple as that. Tony spent most of his life embarrassed and shy, so he turned to being a bully, the neighborhood tough guy. Being a bully was just really Tony acting out for attention, being the wise guy who everybody would admire and mention. So he thought. When Tony took the field that day for the first time, he realized he did not have to be a bully in order to shine. Baseball would show him he could be loved for playing hard as he hit the ball all over the schoolyard. What many kids don't realize is that life could change as fast as a blink. It's just up to you to change how you think. As we go through each day in a positive light, we realize it is easier to be kind than to be angry and fight. This is what Johnny taught us on his way to the game. You get to choose whether to fight or be tame. And here is Tony. I can do this. I can be a great friend. He's coaching himself. Even though Tony was great, Johnny the Jet was clearly the star of the team. He could hit homers, singles, and laser beams. He could throw the ball hard and far. He was truly the neighborhood superstar. But even more important than being a great player, Johnny the Jet was really the, the leader to all the kids in town, never allowing them to become fearful and down. Johnny's goal was for everyone to act upbeat and strong, helping one another to move right along. He encouraged all the kids with something to say, to inspire each other through their words and actions so all can win the day. The neighborhood was now filled with all champion kids who always thanked Johnny for all that he did. He was a leader, friend, and always took a stand, never going against what he believed in, putting a line in the sand. Anything you believe you will be able to do, it always comes down to seeing the champion in you. Believe you can do anything first in your head, clap your hands twice, and torpedo ahead. Life will test you with bullies and pain, but remember, fighting back will leave you nothing to gain. Instead, trust your gut and believe in yourself. 
Be a good friend and put your negative attitude on the shelf. So as you start your day, speak only of good things. Clap your hands twice, whistle and sing. There's so much ahead for a champion like you, as long as you trust yourself in all that you do. And he says, this is a great day. I'm going to inspire somebody today. That's his attitude that day. Johnny the Jet and Tony Dufresne became the best of friends after all. And remember how it started with a bat and a ball. Hey, Johnny the Jet has a really important message for you too. When you see somebody in trouble or trying to hide, let them know they are a champion inside. Simply remind them that in life, things are never that bad. It's better to see things from the brighter side rather than living each day negative and sad. Whatever your dreams, you make them real. It all starts by changing how you think and how you feel. There is a spot on our team for a dreamer like you. Just remember the story of Johnny the Jet in all that you do. And I have a couple other books here you can see, which is Girls on the Run with Mighty Molina and Disco Desi inspires the world with Disco Desi. And on the back, I try to put a nice inspiring message for everybody. And it says, every day we can either win or lose. The best part is we get to choose. And that's a message from Johnny the Jet. So again, here's the book. Johnny the Jet saves the day. He's motivational, inspirational. And every day he wakes up, he knows that he's a champion and it's his job to make the other people around him feel like champions too. So um, I do have a question here. And if anybody else has a question, you can type it in and uh, I'm happy to answer for you. But do you wish you had read this kind of a book when you were a kid? Yeah, I do. Uh, everything I write, you know, whether it's for adults or for kids, I write it based on my own personal experience in life and also my experiences in working with people and coaching people and what they do. Uh, what they deal with. And so many people have something to say, but they don't say it because they're worried about what everybody else thinks. So I don't worry what anybody else thinks. I just say what I need to say. I say what I believe and I follow my heart. I follow my instincts. So I wish I had a book like this that promoted that message uh, even more. Do you like writing children books, children's books or adult books? Well, I like writing both, but it's a lot more fun for me to write a uh, children's book. I can usually write a children's book in, to be honest, 30 minutes or less. So I could write them very quickly once I have a theme. Uh, I have another book coming out um, that's a tribute to Kobe Bryant, um, but, but it happens quickly. So if there's an event that I see or I meet a kid that's dealing with something or uh, Disco Desi's for a charity, it's a good friend of mine that passed away here on Long Island with Desi Strong and his charity, I wrote a book for their charity. So there's always something that inspires the book, but the kids' books are a lot of fun and they're actually a lot easier to write for me. And the illustrated, illustration part, I enjoy a lot as well, because I get to participate you know, in, in coming up with the characters, what the cover looks like, what the back looks like. So it's a lot of fun. Um, what's the best piece of advice you can give a child about being a champion? Well, the first thing is you gotta remind yourself every day that you are, and don't let anybody tell you that you aren't because it's very easy for a kid to believe what people are saying and to think that that's real. And then they, they are left questioning themselves for quite some time. So I, I tell kids the best advice for you is to see yourself as a champion and do what you feel is right and go after whatever you believe in with all of your effort and all of your might. So. Do you get to read these books at schools and libraries? Well, before the times, uh, you know, I, I was going and, and doing this at schools and libraries, bookstores, and traveling all over the country, which I, which I love to do. Um, so yeah, the answer is definitely yes. I did get a chance to, to travel all over and, and read these books and inspire kids. And uh, it was a lot of fun to meet the kids, meet the parents, and, and talk about how to, how to get everybody better and how to get them to, to live a champion's life. Why was it important for you to write these champion books? Well, I hadn't seen anything like it. So what I, I have a background in sports, right? Professional sports. And I also have a career in, in speaking and working with companies and leaders. And uh, I said, I got to blend the two. And if I can help parents 
motivate their children and hope children help children motivate themselves, it's a great combination. See, a lot of times parents, they don't know all the lessons to teach the kids. So I wanted to create a series of books that open up the conversation and that um, start, they start, it starts that dialogue between parent and child, child and parent. And when we could strengthen that, we could do some great things and we can give our kids confidence, which is what they need. If you don't have confidence, it's, you're gonna become very vulnerable, vulnerable as a kid. Uh, which is harder, being an author or being a baseball coach? <laughs> um, definitely being a coach, that's for sure. The author part is fun. I enjoy it. I, the hard part is, you know, you got to go on the road a lot and promote, but it's hard for some. I actually really enjoy that part. But uh, coaching is definitely harder than writing books for me anyway. The book part is, is very therapeutic. What is the motivational note on the back of the book? Every day we can either win or lose. The best part is we get to choose. So I'm very big on you deciding how you're gonna show up in your life. I'm very big on you deciding on what's, what your outcomes are gonna be each day. So that's what this quote is about, right? Every day we can either win or lose. The best part is we get to choose. So if you're having a bad day, you know, oftentimes realize it's you that's causing that. So you can quickly change that by making a few good decisions. Can you tell us a fun story about working with the Yankees? <laughs> well, listen, we won a championship in 2009 and I got to live out part of my dreams. You know, I got to work with players like Derek Jeter and Mariano Rivera and Andy Pettit and Jorge Posada, players that I grew up with that inspired me. And in 2009, I mean, throughout the 90s, I watched them win a bunch of championships. And in 2009, I got a chance to win a championship as their coach and I won a championship with them. So there's nothing better than that. I mean, a fun story is just, you know, traveling the country with, with a bunch of rock stars like that, you know, and, and spending time with great players like Derek Jeter and learning what makes them great. And uh, it's, it's been pretty amazing. It was an amazing ride. So has COVID changed the way you work with people? Um, you know, the only thing that's changed in somewhat is, is the in-person, but I just did, I just worked with a company out in Montauk. I just worked with another company up in Westchester in person last week, and everybody was really excited to get together. But I've done a lot of Zoom, and honestly, it's been, for what I do, it's been great, right? Everybody needs motivation, inspiration, and encouragement now more than ever. So as a coach, it's my job to be out there on the front lines and, and giving that motivation, inspiration, and encouragement, and moving people, um, to take action and not just look at this time as a negative time, but I always say, what's the opportunity that you could see in this time of opposition? And then it's your job to go after that opportunity and seize those opportunities. So do you do your own illustrations? No, I don't do my own illustrations, but I'm involved with all of the illustrations. This is what I would like to see. This is what I would like um, the text to be paired with this image. So I put it all together. Uh, with the illustrator and and he's done all my books and it's been it's been a a, a great relationship thus far um, my 10 year old Fiona listened in and loved the story and the message thank you for sharing with us Fiona thank you so much for listening to the story and and coming on here with us today so thank you Fiona for that and thanks mom or dad for uh for connecting Fiona today uh, what gave you the idea to turn your adult book into a children's book? So this is actually not my, this isn't my adult book. My adult book is called Habits of a Champion. And again, the theme is champion. People say, what do you do, coach? I build champions, right? I build champions in sports and I build champions in business and I build champions in life. So the theme is all about helping people to unleash their inner champion and build that champion self so they can perform at the highest level possible. Um, so, so this, the, the stories that I write as a part of the champion kids book series, they're all unique to kids. And then my, my other books are more leadership books that companies could use to activate their staff, activate their teams and activate their leadership. So, um, what was your favorite book to read as a child? Huh? The book that stands out most, I got to say, is Where the Wild Things Are. I always, I always enjoyed that book. I, I thought it was 
illustrated really well and I, I really connected connected well to it. So um, I will say that's that's probably my top kids book, children's book. If you could tell your younger writing self anything, what would it be? Well, I didn't start writing until later, like in terms of books. I'm only, uh, as an author, I'm only about three years old, but I've written a blog for like the past, you know, I've written that for years, you know, 10 plus years I've, I was writing a blog. So if you could tell your younger writing self anything, what would it be? It would be write a book sooner because if you enjoy writing and you enjoy the process of writing, don't be intimidated by writing a book. And, you know, it's a process like anything else, but you have to get out there and you have to just do it. And I think so many times we get caught up in like, well, how am I going to put this book together? I never wrote a book. And I always said the first part of doing it is writing. Just write the book. Just write and you'll figure the rest out. So that's what I would tell my younger self is just write the book. Write the book. Um, what is your blog about? Well, I believe that people every day, Monday through Friday, they need motivation. They need the inspiration. And they need, they need to be motivated and inspired through relatable stories. So the, I write on DanaCavalia.com, my website, I write a daily blog, Monday through Friday. It comes, you know, if you register, it goes right to your email, or I host it right on the site. And these are day-to-day -day stories that keep you moving through your journey, right? So you can have better outcomes, better performance, and improve your life in different ways, from your physical self to your mental self to your results in your career, business, or as a parent. So I write that. Monday through Friday, so I can connect with the thousands of people that, that read it. So that's, that's what my blog is about. It's about helping you be your best self and, and unleash your champion self. How many unpublished and half-finished books do you have? Do you have a lot of new books in the works? I do. I have probably, I'm probably at six now. So I'm going to release this Fall Habits of a Champion Team. And also another kid's book called Bryant for the Win. Again, it's a tribute to Kobe Bryant, but it's a story about him being a champion because he makes other people champions around him. So I have a, a bunch of other books that, that I have uh, in the hopper, which I'm really excited about. And, and all the books that I write are simply based on my experiences and the people that I meet and the interactions that I have with people. And it gives me an idea to say, how can I give, how could I serve people better? And then my blog, the same thing. So yesterday I wrote about my niece and how she's fearless and she was on a go-kart and the go-kart had a green pedal and a red pedal. So one of the books that I'm going to write is about the green pedal. And it's going to be a reminder to people, hey, don't forget about the green pedal in your life. Oftentimes you want to hit that red pedal, the brake. I want you to hit the green pedal. So you could accelerate yourself. Do you always have stories running through your head or do you wait for inspiration to hit? Well, I'm definitely a thinker. Um, I'm somebody that takes a lot in. And then as I go through my life, there's these different experiences. Like the other day, you know, being with my niece in Pennsylvania, I was looking at her on this go-kart and how excited she was. And I saw these two pedals and my brother was telling her, Hey, hit the green, hit the green. And when she hit the green, she had a lot of fun. So it gave me the idea for the green pedal, which starts as what, which is a blog that I wrote, which then became a, po a podcast episode, which I recorded yesterday, which is going to become a book. So we don't know where the inspiration is going to hit, but there may be a world event. There may be just an event in my life. There may be something that I'm thinking about. I may, again, a friend of mine, unfortunately passed from, from cancer. And that inspired Disco Desi Inspires the World, which is a book I wrote where the proceeds are donated, percentage of the proceeds are donated to charity. So you don't know where it's going to come from. And if you force it and say, I just want to write a book, it, you're not going to write a good one. Like this was based literally on, I spoke to the middle school class. They got me so excited that I came home and in a few hours, I had the whole story cleaned up, sorted out. And then I had to find somebody to illustrate it. And it, and it was a, a lot of fun. So you don't know where the inspiration is going to come from. You just hope it keeps on coming. 
That was great, Dana. We can't thank you enough. I think when I listen to your message, I can't, I, it, it dovetails so much into what we do because you talked about how do we all serve more powerfully. And that's really pretty much a staple of what we say every, every day here at the book fairies. How do we work together to serve more powerfully and to use the, the pun of baseball to level the playing field because so many of our neighbors here on Long Island in New York City do not have access to books. And um, it's a simple thing because people have tons of books that they don't know what to do with. And then we have people who need them. So um, leveling the playing field is what we do here every day. Awesome. And um, really looking out for your neighbors and taking action and doing what you can to serve and, and better serve together. So that's something, it really dovetails into what we do. We can't thank you enough. Um, I'm wondering if maybe you have some type of book in your head about the book fairies, moving the books, moving books. <laughs> books. Yeah, I don't know. It, it doesn't usually hit me in the moment. All um, right, no it, pressure. No pressure, yeah. but we're throwing it out there. Pressure and so. creativity don't go together. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm, lear I'm learning from the coach. I'm learning yeah, from the coach. I love it though. We'll, we'll, maybe we could figure something out. It's good. Well, we're, we're very grateful. Thank you so much for your time. I know we have some other questions, but we're kind of running out of time. So we're going to cut it loose. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. We hope that you'll come back next year. We're going to do the readathon again next year. And um, we hope you'll be a part of it because you were a good hit. Thank you. I'm happy thank to be a part of it. Thank, thank you so much. We, we hope everybody had a good time. And don't forget to sign up for the Disney live stream. Thank you. Bye, everyone.